What's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to show you guys some of the tips and tricks I use with playing Fernando. Fernando is an extremely powerful and nearly unstoppable frontline champion when played correctly. So strong that I've had competitive matches like these where I literally would not die. By using a strong loadout and having a good knowledge of Fernando's kit and playstyles, anyone with some practice can be an absolute legend at playing Fernando. In this video I'll be going over the loadout, legendary card, and items I use in matches. And I'll also be going over some general tips on how to use Fernando's kit. So without further ado, let's get into some of the tips and tricks that I use to play Fernando. Fernando has a very interesting weapon compared to others in the game. While I've criticized it in past videos for having terrible weapon shots that put out one of the worst DPS's in the game, Fernando's flamethrower could also be considered slightly overpowered because of its huge potential for constant pressure from both the damage it puts out and the reduced healing it can apply if Fernando buys cauterize, which is the strongest attack item for Fernando. Fernando's weapon has two aspects that allow the enemy to be constantly pressured by those two effects. The lingering fire effect that remains on the enemy when Fernando attacks them, which is pretty easy to do because of the huge area the flame covers, and the potential Fernando has to never run out of ammo. The fire is rather self-explanatory. Tap a target and they will be caught on fire for a few seconds, having cauterize applied for the duration of the fire if Fernando buys cauterize, and taking constant damage from the fire. The infinite ammo, however, is something that most normal Fernando players do not pull off very successfully. Fernando's weapon can shoot for about 5 seconds before he is forced to reload, and he can recharge a flame lance when he is not shooting or when he is forced to reload after he runs out of ammo. Now most players simply hold down the primary fire for a constant stream of flame, and then quickly run out of ammo, having to reload and take pressure off the enemy long enough that they can escape or keep shooting at you. The simple solution to never running out of ammo is to simply shoot his flame lance like you would a semi-automatic pistol, like Lex's or Strix. Instead of holding down fire, tap it repeatedly. Not only will you consume less ammo while remaining effective because of his fire's damage over time effect, but you will be leagues more mobile than you would be by holding down fire. While shooting his flame lance, Fernando is slowed by a whopping 50%, making it difficult to chase enemies while you are shooting. By tapping his fire instead of holding it down, you can chase after the enemy significantly faster while still firing it. Lots of pro players use this trick, but it is helpful to know when and when not to tap and hold fire. If an enemy is trapped in a void grip by Genos, for instance, you shouldn't really tap fire. You should hold down fire so that you do the maximum damage possible to the trapped enemy. If there are a bunch of enemies nearby and they are not able to run away effectively, you don't really need to tap there either, although it is helpful if you don't want to run out of ammo. There are also cards that you can buy that make running out of ammo something you never really have to worry about. One that I use in my loadout is called Looks That Kill which returns ammo when you shoot a fireball. So if you're low on ammo in the middle of a fight and you shoot a fireball at somebody, you'll be back up by as much as 40% of your ammo and can keep fighting. You can also use the pirate card, which can reduce the amount of ammo that is drained when Fernando shoots. If you haven't seen my How to Use Shields and Paladins video, it would definitely help with explaining how to use Fernando's shield. But there's still a lot that you can do with Fernando's shield that can help you become a more effective Fernando that I didn't really go over in that video. It is still helpful to watch though because I go over ultimate abilities that you can block and some cards that you can use to help make your shield more powerful in that video. Fernando's shield is not at all something you want to have up all the time. A huge mistake a lot of first time Fernando players made, make, including myself, is grabbing ages and sitting on point with their shield up the entire time. Doing this, as I said in my shielding video, is a terrible idea because you're hardly contributing to winning the game by doing that. Instead, you should consider Fernando's shield as sort of a personal shield, kind of like Vivian's but bigger better and overpowered. You want to attack until you get low on health, and then put, just put your shield up. A necessity with Fernando's shield is to have the last stand card in your loadout so you heal while you're behind your shield, meaning you can get into a tough fight, kill someone, and then while you're low from taking heat from them and other enemies, put your shield up, heal, and then repeat the process. You can also block some ultimate abilities with his shield, so if a victor or terminus ultis, just put your shield up and you can block it. With Victors, you have to walk backwards to put your shield between you and the center of the blast. But with a lot of others like Strix's ulti, all you have to do is put your shield up and then they just wasted an ulti. With other ults like Bomb Kings and Pips that go through shields, it helps to save your shield and then put it up after their ulti to try and stay alive after its effect. There's not really much you can do after that point unless you want to try and use your ulti to try and negate it. Fernando's ultimate ability is truly a game changer. His ultimate grants himself and all other allies around him immortality, setting their minimum health at 1500 health for its duration, and it also grants CC immunity as well. If the enemy team has a potentially devastating ulti like Bomb Kings, Skies, or Androxuses, you can use your ult when they do to completely block its effects out. 
If they have a combo ulti where they use the Ceres ult followed by a King Bomb, for instance, and you ult, the entire enemy team just wasted two ultis. If the enemy team has the Drogos, you can save your ulti for when he tries to ult, and then use yours when he goes after you comp to completely destroy his ult. Other than that, there isn't really much to go over with his ult. Just use it when you're gonna die. <laughs> Charge is another tool in Fernando's kit that is quite helpful, not only for escaping, but for combat as well. If you can hit an enemy with charge, it will deal 200 damage to them, and it also goes through shields. Meaning if you've gotten an enemy Fernando or something really low, and they put their shield up, you can just charge through and kill them with the damage that the charge does. I use charge to deal damage to the enemy while at the same time disorienting them, because when you charge through them, all of a sudden you're behind them and they are surrounded with you on one side and your angry team on the other. Charge is also very helpful for retreat, which is its intended purpose. And with the heat transfer card, you can recharge part of charge's cooldown when your shield takes damage. So if you get into danger, you can put up your shield, charge away, and then when your shield takes more damage, you can charge away again. My personal loadout uses heat transfer, last stand, unstoppable force, safe travel, and looks that kill, which are all strong cards that I would recommend using. There is one card that I think every Fernando player, regardless of playstyle, should have in their loadout. And that is Last Stand, the card that heals Fernando when he is behind a shield. If you max it out like mine is in my deck, you can have roughly the equivalent of two Genos healings on you at once while you are behind your shield. And since you are behind your shield, the enemy's shots tainted with cauterize will not be able to hit you, allowing you to heal in full while your shield takes all of the damage. The legendary cards for Fernando are all pretty decent, although I would stay away from Scorch because it is just the least useful. You can do a little bit more damage with the fireball, but oftentimes the bonus damage that it grants for hitting enemies behind the ones you've already hit is never actually achieved. Aegis is often considered to be the best because it gives your shield a tremendously smaller cooldown and an infinite duration, so you can heal for as long as you need to with the last stand card, and it is a solid pick of a legendary card if you wanted to go that route. I actually use the formidable legendary card, however, because it heals you for 60% of your health when you fall under 40% for 3 seconds. This is basically like having a personal Ceres combined with the two personal Genesis that you have with Last Stand. And I cannot tell you how many times it has saved me from certain death and even won entire battles. So I would definitely recommend getting that card. Really, picking Aegis or Formidable is just a matter of personal preference and playstyle. But I would pick Formidable over Aegis any day, even though I'm sure there will be one or two salty Fernando players in the comments that disagree with my decision. Formidable has caused me to have games like this, it is definitely a great choice of a card, especially if your team does not have a healer. There are a few items that I almost always buy with Fernando because they are really fitting for Fernando's kit and playstyles. Nimble is always my first pick because it allows me to be a much more effective flank. Fernando is essentially a flank with a massive shield and enormous health pool, and he should be played as such, literally forcing the enemy team off of the objective and zoning them out. Nimble helps him do all of that, and also helps with the slowness Fernando is affected by when he is shooting. Cauterize is also a great buy for Fernando because his weapon is one of the best at applying and reapplying Cauterize with his damage over time effect and large area that his flamethrower can cover, being able to hit multiple people at a time with his large flame. If the enemy team has a Bomb King or some other champions that have a lot of crowd control abilities, I would definitely buy Resilience over Blast Shields or Haven, because it's not their damage that is their threat, but the ability, ability to take you out of combat. Resilience 3 makes Bomb King's ult and Grumpy Bomb, Genos' Void Grip, Ash's abilities, and a plethora of other crowd control abilities completely ineffective at stopping you from devastating the enemy team. With my sort of hybrid flank nano playstyle in which I try to literally push back the enemies off the point by advancing past the objective and engaging them there, having Nimble 3 and Resilience 3 allows me to rampage through the enemy ranks without them being able to stop me. The healing card is more situational. If you have a good healer, Rejuvenate is helpful, but otherwise I would grab kill to heal. While you won't be able to finish off most enemies, you can still tap an enemy that is low and heal quite substantially when they die. With Formidable, Last Stand, Fernando's extremely versatile shield, Nimble 3 and Resilience 3 if the enemy team has crowd control, and a healer that is not a potato and actually heals the tank, it is easy to be almost completely unstoppable as Fernando. With this combination of cards, items, and a general knowledge of how to use Fernando's kit which I just went over, you can absolutely destroy in most matches you play with some practice. All three of these matches 
are matches where I absolutely wrecked face and only died a total of one time because of these tips and tricks that I use when playing Fernando. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if any of these tips help you become a better Fernando, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more content like this from me. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.